Hallelujah. Good morning, Church. Good morning, Church of God, Hong Kong. Praise the Lord. It's Sunday again, and this is the time that we will fellowship again, God, with all our heart, with all our soul. So, sa sa mga nyo po ako manalangin, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you again. We are asking, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, your Son and our Savior, to guide us through in our study today. Samahan niyo po kami, Panginoon, with the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will move in our hearts, that you will change us again once more. Glory glory to glory, Panginoon, for, for your glory's sake. And we ask today that you will bless us, you bless our hearts and our minds. And we pray that you will find favor on us, O Lord, as we approach your throne of glory, your throne of mercy. We do believe that we have sinned throughout the week. We do believe that we have fallen short. And we ask for your forgiveness and help us, Panginoon, help us, help us to understand your word and apply it in our daily life. Lord, we ask in the mighty name, in the beautiful name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 So again, good morning church and I would like to uh, acknowledge again to those people who are continually uh, supporting the church financially by their tithes and offering. Rest assured, all of your donations are being accounted by our finance team. At uh, patuloy rin po kayong uh, makakaasa na ito po ay magagamit for the proper purpose of your donation. Please continue to do so. Donate and top up your donation, your tithes and offering to all 7-Eleven and K-Circle by our QR code. And today, for our um, study is about Ephesians 4.29. It's about transform talk. And I would like to acknowledge all the care group leaders, all the leaders that we have in the church. Uh, good morning. And I pray that you will continue to reach out to our people, to your sheep that God has entrusted you. Build them up. And we pray that uh, this pandemic will be over soon, that we could have a face-to-face -face fellowship with our dear Lord. So this is our study for today. Transform, the transform talk. Pag-uusap. And it's coming from Ephesians 4.29. This is the letter of Paul to the Ephesian people and said, let no corrupting talk come out from your mouth. Ikaw, ikaw kapatid at ako, ikaw na nakikinig. Let no corrupting talk come out from your mouth. But only such is or as is good for building up. Wala po daw corrupting words na dapat lumabas sa ating bibig na pangungusap. Lalabas lang po sa ating bibig are those words that good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So this is the ESV uh, version of verse 29. So let me share also the NLT to make it more uh, understandable. Don't use foul or abusing language. Again, Paul is reminding us that we don't need to use foul or we have to limit or we have or not limit but we we don't use this foul language or abusive language let everything you say or we say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear tama nga naman no if you use foul words uh, foul words abusive language would this be an encouragement to other people who will hear? Of course not. That's why Paul is reminding you, or God reminding us through Paul. Okay, then let me add on what James said on chapter 3, verse 2. Sabi po rito, If anyone does not stumble in what he say, he is a perfect man because he is able to bridle the whole body as well. Nakuha niyo po yun. Kung sino man po daw ang hindi na istambol sa kanyang mga salita, siya ay perfect because kaya niyang kontrolin pati ang kanyang whole body. Now, NLT also say in the same verse, indeed, we all make many mistakes. 
not simple mistake, not one or two. We all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongue, we would be perfect. Kung kaya po daw natin kontrolin our tongue, then you and I could be perfect. Because could also control ourselves in every other way. Now, in reality, we may never, never achieve perfect control over our tongue. Yung po ang katotohan, this is the sad reality that you and I could not control our tongue. If the husband and wife consistently apply what we are learning today, verse 29 of chapter 4, Ephesians, we would see rarely divorce. Tanga po, no? If the husband will control her tongue, the wife will control her tongue, we rarely see, bihira, hindi po natin masisira, pero bihira po natin makikita ang divorce. Same case with parents towards their children. If the parents practice this verse 29, we will see few children in Christian homes rebel against their children against their parents. Okay, no? Kung i-apply po daw ng mga magulang, then less children in a Christian home will rebel against their parents. Same case towards among us in the church. We would see less church will do split over personal grudges or complex or minor doctrinal issue if we continually apply verse 29 of chapter 4. In a relationship level, in husband and wife, in the parental level to the children, and also among us within the church, if we continually apply verse 29, then we will see less issues about it. That's why in short, Ephesians 4 29 is a very good verse that would bring radical change in all our relationship if we would apply it consensuously. Okay, no? Kung i-apply po daw natin talaga, it will bring radical change in your relationship and in my relationship. When you say radical change, is a 360 change. Talaga pong makikita ang resulta. Talaga pong makikita ang pagbabago. Rather, we'll use words than tearing down people. Okay? We use these words to build up others. And dito po tayo mahina. All of us fall short on this because we have the tendency to use words to tear down people. This is what we want. This is the old men want that we want to tear down those people who hurt us, those people who are against us. So rather, using these words to turn down these people or tear down these people, we use them to build up others. So there are two things that I want to share to you. What is the problem? Why we use foul words? Why we use foul languages? Why we want to tear down these people? What is the problem? And here's the first point that I want to share to you. Now, the second point is, if there is a problem, there's always a solution. Okay? God or Paul is showing us this is the problem, and God is also showing us this is the solution. So let's proceed, my dear brothers and sisters, again, to the people of the care group, to the ministry of care group, or whatever ministry that you have in the church of God, I, I want to acknowledge and hopefully that you are, prayerfully that you are listening right now and try to con try to uh, meet up with your people, okay, and encourage them and build them. So the first one is the problem. What is the problem? The problem is we can use our words to tear down others. Totoo po yun. Nagagamit po natin yan. Especially if we are not carefully watching movies, TVs, or anything in the internet, we will hear a lot of samples of speeches that tear down others. That's true. In the, multi in the media right now, online, 
YouTube, anywhere, whatever platform, you will see a lot of things or examples of speeches that tear down others. And most of the rumors, or not rumors, but humor in TV sitcoms or comedy shows that we watch, right? It comes from husband, it comes from wife, it comes from parents or children or co-worker putting each other down. Ito nakikita, no? Yung mga katatawanan is minamalit po lagi ang kapwa-tao. Ganun po ang nakikita natin. Again, this kind of thing that putting down other people is a characteristic of our own life. Yung dati po natin buhay nung wala pa tayo kay Kristo, nung hindi ka pa binabago ni Kristo, ito ang buhay po natin. We like that to turn down people. And this is not a characteristic of a new life in Christ. Diba? Patuloy po tayong binabago ni Kristo, pero yung pag-turn down natin and tear down natin sa ibang tao, ay eh dapat ito po yung nalilis, nalilis, nalilis as we continue to follow Christ because you have a new life. Remember what we learned last week, last Sunday? If you're watching, you are blessed because God is telling you we have to continue to put on our new life. Remember that we have to put our new life. All right? Now, if we want God to transform our speech in line with our context in verse 29, again, we should not be watching this kind of things that tear down people. Wag po tayong manood, wag po natin tang tangkilikin to. And if we have no choice, we should less laughing on it. Kasi yung mga rumors nila, basta makapagpatawa lang, is mananakit na po ng kapwa. And this thing is not pleasing to our dear Lord. And it's not also fitting as a new man or having a new life. Iwasan po natin ito. So to get rid of unwholesome speech, we must identify it. Para maalis po natin ito, mga bagay-bagay na hindi karapat-dapat na pananalita o unwholesome speech, we must identify it. identify it. Now, the Greek words translate unwholesome as rotten. Unwholesome speech is also translated useless, unprofitable. Yung po ang ibig sabihin ito, no? It is used in Matthew, refers at rotten fruits. It's also been referred as rotten fish. You see? Hina nyo po, no? Unwholesome words that not build up people but tear down people translate me, translated as rotten, useless, at unprofitable. Matthew quoted it could be a rotten fruit or a rotten fish. John Piper observed such rotten speech is like a fruit and a rotten fish which will not nourish anyone. That's true, no? Kung ang pananalita mo ay bulok, ulitin ko po, bulok, rotten, like a rotten fruit, like a rotten fish, it will not nourish anyone. Subukan mo kumain ng bulok na prutas. Subukan mo kumain ng bulok na ita. Would it nourish us? No. It will contaminate us. Kaya ingat po tayo sa pananalita. Because if you speak abusive language, words that will tear down people, it's like a rotten fruit, a rotten fish, a fish that will not nourish us, but more to contaminate us. And this is not a characteristic of a new man. A new man pronounce word that is wholesome. Pronounce word that will build up people. The old self, the old man, ang bukang bibig niyan is rotten. Rotten fish, rotten fruit. All the words will contaminate. It will make us sick. And it smells bad and creates unpleasant atmosphere for everyone who gets 
near it. Totoo na po. Mag, subukan niyo magsalita ng mga salitang hindi maganda. It will create unpleasant atmosphere and no one want to get near. It smells bad because it will make sick. Make us sick. So again, kapatid, if you are following Christ and if you are a disciple of Christ, we have to watch our words. Identify those speeches that will not glorify God. Identify it. All those words that will bring contamination okay, to other people, make them think, iwasap po natin yun because it will not nourish them. It will not nourish them. So Paul tell us to get rid of it those unwholesome rotten speeches just like a rotten fish or a rotten fruit. Now let me give you some examples of rotten speeches or words. First in our list is name calling, out down or trading insult for insult. Again, it's an act of insulting someone by calling them rude name. You know what I'm saying? My, my dear brothers and sisters, name calling is an insult, an act of insulting someone, calling them names. Example, calling people pigs, calling people terrorists, calling people coward or traitor. You know, often, kadalasan, these things done in a so-called humor, para makapagpatawa lang, People are naming people. Okay? But this kind of thing will not honor God. Because God wants you and me to build up others. First Peter say that say that that if or we that that we should not return insult for insult, but instead giving them blessing. Napakalino po, no? First Peter, no? Rather, if somebody insults you, don't return an insult to him as well. Better, as what God's word say, return blessing. And again, ang naturalesa ng tao, okay, the old man will continue to react. Instead of giving them blessing, our natural tendency is to return insult for insult. This is number one. We should identify this and remove it in our mind and in our heart. Second is sarcasm, ridicule, or mark, mockery. Sarcastic or irony. 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 Okay? So now you know sarcasm. Do you, I, I believe you have heard sarcastic no uh, misan lolokohin niyo po ang kapatiran o mga kakilala oh pagod na pagod ka you have done a lot of things but in reality in her background napakagulo pa rin ng lugar so that's sarcastic no and in in the bible there are godly people who use occasionally sarcasm ridicule or mock mockery against those people who leading the people of god astray a good example would be elijah okay Elijah mocked the prophet of Baal. Okay? Sinasabi po niya, baka lakasan niyo pa ang iyong panalangin, ang iyong hiyawan. Baka natutulog pa ang iyong Diyos. And this is what, uh, the thing that spoken by Elijah to those people. And you could see also the, our Lord Jesus ridicule the piracy for their hypocrisy and legalism. Masyado silang Inaayos nila ang panlabas, pero sa loob ay napakarumi naman. Again, this kind of speeches, sarcasm, ridicule, and mockery, should be carefully controlled or else it will be spilled over into sin. Pag hindi po natin kinontrol ito sa ating puso at isipan, okay, it will go into sin. And number three is blaming. Exaggerated attacks. Yan, marami po kayo, no? Blaming game. Blaming others came with the fall. Do you recall in Genesis when our forefathers sinned, Adam and Eve, 
Ano nangyari? It's a blaming game. Eve blamed, or Adam blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the Satan for the snake. Again, it's associated with the fall, and it is a major element in ungodly speeches. Again, major element in blaming and ex exaggerated attack. Okay. In godly speeches. A good example will be you always, you use the word you always. Or you never. You always like this. It's not a good word or a good phrases to tell other people. Or you will never learn this. The word you never. Again, iwasan po natin yan. We should identify those words that will not give glory to God. We have to identify those words that will not build up people. Once we identify, we need to control or eliminate this in our life. And fourthly is destructive criticism. Again, yung pagpuna ay okay lang po. Criticism. As long as constructive, not destructive. Okay? In other words, if our words are contained or aimed at helping or healing, sorry, if our words is not aimed to heal or help other people, it's just only an outlet of our displeasure or temper, pag ganun po ang ginawa natin, we are sinning. Do you understand what I'm saying? If our words, the things that you will say to other people are not aimed to help, not aim to heal, it's just only an outlet of your displeasure, say ba, then we are sinning. And Proverbs say here, there is, there is one, there is one who speak rashly, like a thrust of a sword, but the tongue of a wise bring healing. Kaya napakaganda po sabi ng ng Proverbs, no? yung pagsasalita po natin ng rashly, okay? hindi natin napapakinggan muna, it's like a sword that could kill, that could hurt. But the tongue of a wise brings healing. Brings healing po. Now, another thing that we need to identify are angry words. Ano yung angry words? Including threat, pagbabanta, at paghihiganti. Okay? This kind of words are only trying to dominate, trying to control the other person through fear and intimidation. Dahil gusto mo silang kontrolin, gusto mo silang i-dominate, you will use threatening words, threatening words, or maghihiganti ka. And again, we have to identify this and eliminate it from our heart. heart. Pang-anin po is gossip. Is slander. Now, kadalasan, often gossip and slander is spread partial truth. Okay? Ang gossip po daw at slander, when it's spread partially true, mixed with falsehood. Gossip, partially true, mixed with falsehood to make the other person look bad. Napapangit naman po, no? Kung ikaw yung magchichismis, gossip, alam mong kalahating truth lang ito at puro kamalian na because the, your objective is to make other people look bad. And sometimes, gossip and slander may be true. Mare pong totoo ito. But the one that you are telling has no business and no need to learn that thing. Although totoo yung nalaman mo at gusto mong sabihin at kating-katian bila mo sabihin, pero yung pagsasabihan mong tao does not need to know. He has no business to know. Sometimes, yung pag-gossip po natin, binablanket natin ng maganda. How is this done undercover? Okay. For example, I will approach one person and I will and I have this gossip and gossip is partially true mixed with falsehood. I will tell these people, then I will use some words, something like this. I'm telling you this so you could help me pray for it. 
Wow! Napakagandang cover up, no? Para magpatuloy ka lang sa gossip, sasabihin mo, dutugtungan mo ng godly thing. I'm telling you this so you could help me pray for her or pray for him. Number seven that we need to identify is profanity. And what this mean? Again, this is what we have learned last time that we are not to take the Lord's name in vain. This includes the shortened form of our Lord, such as, Oh my God! Misa po sa mga Kristiyano, sa mga bata, we hear this, Oh my God! But again, we must identify this and not use this word. And number eight, filthy talk or coarse joke. Napaganda po yun ito. Paul is basically hit this in verse 3 and 4 in chapter 5. What is this filthy talk or coarse joke? These are all the dirty jokes. These are all the green jokes. These are all the words that identify itself with sex. Okay? Related to sex. Para makapagpatawa lang, joke lang, papasukan po ng mga ring, green jokes. Again, hindi po ito maganda and we have to identify this. Because all of these forms of rotten speeches, which is not beneficial. Again, this is number one. This is the problem. No? This is the problem. Those words that we speak that will not build up other people, these abusive words, okay, these abusive speeches are rotten speeches according to the Bible. And rotten speeches is translated to a rotten fruit, a rotten fish. Okay? Rotten fruit, rotten fish will not benefit the people. It will only contaminate them. So same case with our words. If our words will not be beneficial, it will be rotten, then it will only contaminate. And again, Paul and God and us, I'm telling you right now, we should identify these words that is not beneficial to other people. And this is the problem that we have. And if we have a problem, God also tells us there is a solution. And this is the solution. As a new creation in Christ, use our words to build up people or to build up others. Dahil bago ka nang nilalang kapatid, the new man, you're putting a new man, the old has gone, the new has come, you are a new man. So we have to choose our word. Okay? Our word should be building up other people. Kung mahina ka dyan, mahina rin ako kapatid, pag-aralan po natin to, tatulong ng ating may kapal. We have to use words to build up others. Instead of word degrading, instead of word putting down people, we use these words to build up other people. Paul said that we should use only such a word that is good for edification. According to the need, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Pag narinig yan ng mga ibang tao, at ganun pala siya, ganun pala yung turo sa akin, ganun pala ang, ang pagkabago sa kanya ng ating pang, it will give grace to those people who hear. Five things that I want to share with you, how to build up others, first and foremost, to build up others, we must be a new creation or a new creation in Christ. Now, unbelievers, may learn to communicate civilly, okay? Maayos naman. But Paul is not talking here about that transformation, okay? No, sorry. Paul is not talking about that. But Paul is talking about transformation that stem, okay? That stem from putting on a new man, which is the likeness of God has been created in righteousness, and holiness of the truth. Transformation. Again, transformation is not a thing that men can do. 
what we have learned in our past study that only God could transform people. He had transformed you. He had transformed me. That's why you have put in this new man. And again, pinapaalala po sa Every day we have to put this new man, reminding your mind, reminding my mind, reminding my heart, reminding your heart to put this new man. And someone say, if we teach an unbeliever how to communicate in a nice way, he's saying like this, we're just putting a coat and tie on a pig. Kung ang unbeliever daw ay tuturuan natin mag-communicate na mga words to build up people, we're just putting a coat and tie on a pig. Why? Because we haven't changed his nature, which is prone to pride and self-seeking. These people might have nice speech, but this speech is really just to get, or this, this speech that they are speaking is just a tool to get his way. Meaning, to manipulate people to get his own goal. Siya po ay hindi talaga tunay ang kanyang pagbabago o transformation sa kanyang puso. Bagamat ginagamit niya itong mga nice words or languages or speech para sa kanyang sariling uh, hidden agenda. But Christian uses speech to glorify God, his Savior. It is completely new motive stem from the new birth. Dahil ikaw ay pinanganak ba muli? Bago ka nang nilalang, again, you use godly speeches to glorify your God, the Savior. Alright? Now, letter B, to build up others with wholesome words, such words must first be in our thoughts. Yan, napakahirap po nito, no? To build up others daw, dapat nasa isip agad natin, una, okay, una daw sa ating isip na pumasok, ay eh, mga words na to build up others. Galatians 5, 20 to 21, alam ko pong alam yun na, the deeds of the flesh include enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, dispute, dissension, faction, and then being, a lot of things po, no, po sabi po ng Galatian, ito yung the deeds of the flesh, ito yung gusto ng katawan po natin. And Jesus said in Matthew, for our, from out of our heart, of the heart, comes evil thoughts. What are those? Murder, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. He mentioned also in verse 34, chapter 12, Sabi niya, you broad of vipers, how can you be in evil is speak what is good? Ikaw na masama, paano ka magsasalita ng mabuti? For the mouth speak out of that which fills the heart. Galing po sa puso. So anong ibig sabihin po niyan? Evil speech is rooted in an evil heart. Kung ang salita mo ay hindi maganda, makasalanan, dahil lang puso ay hindi maganda, dahil lang puso ay makasalanan. So, evil speech is rooted in an evil heart. Which is why genuine, tunay na pagbabago, pagbabago, transformation, Galing from kay God is the foundation of transform talk. Napakalinaw po, no? Ang tunay na pagbabago ay nagmumula sa puso. Okay? Puso. Puso na hindi mo binago, na hindi ko binago. Puso na binago ng ating Panginoon. And this is the genuine conversion. And this is the foundation of transform talk. Dahil lahat ang sinasabi mo ay galing sa puso. Kung ang puso mo ay transformed, your talk will be transformed. If your speech are evil, then your heart is evil. Simple as that. A good example, my dear brothers and sisters, is a couple, mag-asawa. 
they have a conflict in marriage. Lahat po ng marriage, dumadaan po sa conflict. But a good example is like this. And if this conflict, or if this couple, they are in conflict in their marriage, they will not speak, especially in the morning. The husband will storm out the door and go to his office, and throughout the day, he will think. He will think about his wife, and he will say, this woman is so difficult to live with. All day long, ito po ang isipin niya, running her down, he is thought, this girl, this this, this wife of mine is difficult to live with. Same case also for the wives. For the wife, same thing. Sasabihin niya po, this man that I marry is so insensitive of my feeling. The wife will cry whole day and maybe call some friends, tell her about how difficult this husband of mine, this monster. And again, no brainer, kapatid. Whole day the husband thinks like this. The wife thinks like this whole day. It will be a no brainer. They will not have an evening spent loving each other, but they will have a day or an evening in simple thoughts. Nakuha niyo po yun? Their mouth will speak out simple overflow of their hearts. Simple, simple overflow from their hearts. And this is the problem. And again, if there's a problem, there is a solution. And what's the solution? Judge. Judge the evil thought. Examine our own sin and shortcoming. And ask God and our Mate, or our relationship po natin to forgive us. Tama po yung sabi nila, tama po yung sabi ng Bible, take out the log of our own eye and then thank God throughout the day for our mate and pray for him or her to be a godly person. Bago po tayo pumana, pumuna sa iba, tinanggalin muna po natin yung log sa ating mga mata and ask God for forgiveness and thank and being thankful throughout the day. Now, think about that. Think about how we could speak, or how can we speak in such way that we could build up our people in relation, how, how people who are having relationship with us, or our mate. Imbis na isipin po natin buong araw, gano siya kagrabe, kung gano siya kasama, think about things in such way that we could react to build her up. And this is the godly thing that what God said. Someone said, if we, if we think twice before we speak, okay, <clears throat> okay, here's the one. If you think twice before you speak once, you will speak the better of it. Napaganda po nang sabi, no? If we think, of, if you think twice before you speak, kung ikaw ay mag-isip muna bago magsalita, pag sinabi po natin ito, it will be much better of it. Much better do sa una mong sasabihin. Which is true. No? Bago po tayo magsalita, kontrolin po natin, pag-isipan po natin. Once we tell that already, then it will be much better Doon po sa initial na gusto po nating sabihin. Also, from what I read, napaganda po, no? What I read, listening is learning new things. While speaking, it's just repeating on what you have learned. Tama ba? Nakuha niyo po yung ibig ko sabihin? Kaya napaka-importante pong makinig muna eh. Because listening is learning new things. Things that you will hear in the will hear in the first time, because this one speaking, you are just repeating what you have listened or heard before. But listening is new idea, new input. Kaya napaganda po, no? Letter C: To build up others, use wholesome words. I will repeat: To build up others. Use wholesome words. 
Sabi po ni Paul, what is good? Word, what is good for edification? And what is edification mean? Good for build up. Good for encouragement. Use words that will help other people to grow in godliness. Ikaw, kapatid na nakikinig at sa akin, sarili ko, we have to use words to help other people to grow in godliness. And these words, again, mga kapatid, are wholesome words. These are not rotten words that will contaminate people, but this word will continue to help them grow in godliness. And let me give you some good words or example that we could use every day to help people grow in godliness. First and foremost on the list is encouragement and praise. Paul writes to Thessalonian people, verse 11, chapter 5 says, Therefore encourage one another and build one another just as you also are doing. Kadalasan, we parents only criticize and correct our kids, but instead catch our kids of doing something right and praise them for it. Encourage them in areas that they are doing well. Same case also po dun sa mga karelasyon po natin. Iwasan po natin yung mga words na hindi magbibuild up. Tinuturuan po tayo ni Paul ngayon, tinuturuan po tayo ni God ngayon to encourage people and to praise people. Okay? It's hard to do. Kung hindi ito ang natural lesson natin, that's true because this is the old man style. But now God has transformed you. Your heart is transformed. Whatever comes from your mouth, it comes from your heart. If your heart is transformed, then your, your speech will be transformed. And this transform, one of the things that a transformed man will say is encouragement. Encourage other people. Build up other people. Praise those people on the things that they have done good. Okay? Second is appreciation and gratefulness. Okay? Ito po related sa encouragement and praise. But once we do appreciation and gratefulness, it must come from the heart. Hindi po maganda yun, i-appreciate mo ang isang tao para ma-appreciate lang. Again, appreciation must come straight from your heart and from my heart. Okay? If we are thinking rightly about our mate or our children or co-worker, okay, we must also need it to express it verbally. Napakaliwanag po, no? A sign of appreciation, that is good, but ini-encourage po tayo to express it verbally. Verbally, sabihin po natin ito in a personal matter manner. Okay? Yung pong encouragement po sa atin. Thirdly, loving words, patient words, kind words, and gentle words. Okay? Ano po itong mga words of encouragement is loving words, patient words, and kind words, and gentle words. Number one example of loving words is, I love you. Say that to your partner. Say that to your do sa relationship say that to your children, to your parents, I love you. Minsan po, mahirap po sabihin yan, kahit gusto mong sabihin. Minsan hindi natin ito naturalesa na magsabi ng I love you. But someone say, if the whole world has only 10 minutes to live, gugunawin na ang mundo. Sabi po daw ng tao ito, most of the people, all the people will get the phone and will say, I love you dun po sa relatives nila or dun sa ka-relationship. Why you have to wait for that time to come? Again, encouragement. Hold some words that will encourage people, edify people by saying loving words. A good example will be saying I love you. Another word is patient word. This is open express not only by words. Yung patient daw, patient words, 
is not usually expressed in verbal words. Okay? But it also could be seen in facial expression and body language. Tama ba? Yung patient word is not only verbal, but most of the time it could be seen in a facial expression or body language. Sometimes we should say, that's okay, you're doing fine, but impatient communicates on our part. Ibig sabihin, nagsasabi ka nga ng uh, patient words, but your facial expression, your body language show impatient. Meaning, me pride on our part. Nakuha niyo po yun? I hope you understand what I'm saying, my dear brothers and sisters. Patient word is so hard to practice, but this is what God has telling you and telling me that we need to practice. Okay? Patient word. Thirdly is kind words. 1 Corinthians 13.4, sabi po rito, love is kind. We should especially be kind when someone has done something dumb or something has failed. Mahirap po yun, no? If someone has done wrongly, if someone has done something dumb, ang sabi po rito, we should have this special thing to be kind to that someone who made a mistake. Because our tendency is we are tempted to ridicule that person. Totoo naman, no? Panagkamali, gusto mong bulyawan, gusto mong sabihan ng masasakit para matuto. But at that moment, hindi niya kailangan yun eh. At that moment, he does not need that ridicule. At that moment, he need godly words of kindness is needed. Again, kind words we need to identify and practice because this is a wholesome words that God wants you as a new man to practice. Instead of ridiculing those person who made mistake, if you do so, he will not be built up, she will not be built up. And lastly, gentle words. Fruit of the Spirit include gentleness. This is what we learn in Galatians 5. Okay? Yung gentle in the Greek form does not imply weakness. Pag gentle, mahina ka. Hindi po. Gentle means strength or power under control. Nakuha niyo po yun? Kung ikaw ay gentle, yung naturalesa mo na sumabog na parang vulkan, nakukontrol mo. Okay? And that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Gentle words. Imbis na bulyawan mo, imbis na sabihan mo ng masasakit na salita, you are controlling. Okay? Because God has given you the, the gift of gentleness in your heart. Strength. You have the strength under control. Gentle words. Okay? Now, gentle person, let me remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, gentle person is a good one is under the control of the Spirit. If a person is like a volcano erupting, erupting and erupting, without any gentleness, and this person is not under the control of the Spirit. Other Spirit control her or control him. Gentleness means thinking about how the other people, person, or other person will feel and how our words will make him feel. Namnamin niyo po, no? Sabi po rito, gentleness means thinking about how the other person feels and how our words will make him feel. Kung ikaw ay gentle, okay, iisipin mo kung paano niya how the person will react on the words that you use. Napaga na po. Again, gentleness, a person is under the control of the spirit. 
Number seven. Scriptures, this is our, the wholesome words that we could use as a new man, is scriptures that God has used in our life. And again, scripture, <coughs> mga kapatid, is not, oh sorry, the scripture that we are telling here is not about this, this kind of thing that I'm doing, preaching or using scriptures to berate the other person, but rather using scriptures as God has taught in us, and this is, will be the most probable or the most edifying kind of speech because God's word is given to us to build up in the faith. Okay? Ano pa, anong gandang example yan? For example, <clears throat> there are people around us that are discouraged. So how to build up, how to use wholesome word? Use scriptures. You could say, you know, a verse that God has used in my life when I was discouraged, and this is the verse. Use the verse to build up other people. Number eight, use words of loving correction. Again, when needed. Sometimes we must use our words to correct someone who is thinking and acting wrongly. But we have to be careful. Never use this or never release it out even the person is in wrong. Okay? We have to very, very careful. But rather, always pray, always think how about to speak or about how to speak in the most effective manner with the aim of helping the person to grow in Christ. Use words of loving correction when it's needed. But once we release this word, before we release this word, we have to pray, we have to think, okay, how to speak this in the most effective manner. Kasi ang gusto po natin is the person to grow in Christ, helping them to grow in Christ. Now, Christians should know and practice 2 Timothy 2, 24-25. Napaganda po, no? Kung ikaw ay Kristiyano, kung ikaw ay tagasunod ni Kristo, okay, sabi po rito, the Lord bond servant must not be quarrelsome. Ikaw, oo, ikaw na nakikinig. Okay? The Lord bond servant, ikaw na tagasunod ni Kristo at ako, must not be quarrelsome. Okay, hindi ko alam po yung exact na Tagalog ng quarrelsome, but I know in my heart, you know what is quarrelsome. Pagiging quarrelsome, yun po daw dapat ang iwasan natin. But we must be kind to all. Hindi to some, but to all. I'm kind, kind, kind. Oh, this one, I don't like. Not kind, kind. Hindi po. Kailangan po daw all kind, able to teach. Kasi pananalita mo, the way you speak, the way you act can teach other people. Patient when wrong, pa nagkamali. Ang tao sa iyo, we have to be patient. Ang hirap rin yan, mga kapatid, pero ito ang gusto ng ating Diyos. With gentleness correcting those who are in the position. Sa mundong ito, maraming pong opposition. Maraming kontrabida. Pero ano sabi po ni God? correcting gentleness gentleness correcting to those who are in opposition if perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth and lastly in these words of encouragement or wholesome words that we could use is prayer napaka importante po prayer sometimes we may not know what to say. But we could, but we can say always to other people, no? sometimes po, meron pong nadidiscourage yan at gusto pong i-edify, gusto mong i-build up, kaso wala kang masabi. It's normal. But you could say to these people, to this person, I don't have the answer to your problem right now. But God does 
has the answer. Let's ask Him in prayer for wisdom and help. Tama, ganda po, no? Kung kailangan mo i-edify ang isang tao, to build up ang isang tao, wholesome word is prayer. Sabihin mo sa tao, I don't have the solution, the answer to your problem now, but God has a solution. Let's ask Him in prayer for wisdom and help. So to build up others, we must be a new creation. We must first have wholesome words in our thoughts, kind words that we just had seen some examples that I just read to you. Now, letter D. Tuloy po natin yung pagbibuild up. To build up others, kailangan po daw tayo ay sensitive. Hindi lang basta sensitive, sensitive sa kanilang needs. The word here used by Paul is according to their need, according to the need. This implies that we are sensitive enough to understand what the person's real needs are. We, if we don't understand the person's need, even well-intentioned words, good words that will say, na imbis na makatulong, imbis na makahil, it will hurt them. Okay? It will hurt them. So the question is, how do we find out the person's need? Paano ko malalaman ang pangangailangan ng isang kapatiran? First and foremost, learn the person need by listening again. Okay? Listen again. Hindi ka pwede pwede mag-encourage, mag-encourage agad. Okay? Although maganda ang iyong intasyon, pero hindi mo naman naunawa ng kanyang pangangailangan. So you must need, you must learn the person need by listening. Again, it will be frustrating, mga kapatid, okay? frustrating experience of trying to talk to someone who was not really listening to you. Napakahirap to, no? Frustrating. Salita ka na, salita, dada ka na, encourage ka na, eh, hindi ka naman nakikinig. Perhaps, even the person offered a solution to the problem, but it was useless advice because we felt that he really didn't understand what our need was. Napaganda na kanyang suggestion, solution sa yung problema, okay? Sa problema, pero hindi naman niya naiintindihan ng yung problema. Nag-over siya ng solution na hindi naman angkop sa yung problema. So it will be useless ang kanyang advice. So again, Paul is saying, we have to learn to listen or discern to listen the other person's need before we give him an advice or her an advice. Second, learn the person's need by asking question. Hindi lang basta narinig, mag-ask po tayo ng question. Kasi Proverbs 18.13 say, He who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. Ang ganda talaga ng salita ni God, no? ang ganda ng Proverbs. He who gives answer before he hears. Ganun po tayo minsan eh. Nagmamadali, nagmamarunong-marunungan. Gusto agad magbigay ng answer! Pero hindi naman naiintindihan. So again, Paul is suggesting to us is learn the people's need by asking questions. Thirdly, Learn the person's need by picking up non-verbal clues. Hindi lang po sa pananalita, no? Mga non-verbal clues. Okay. This is part of listening as well. Pag ikaw ay nakikinig, hindi lang yung buka ng bibig ng nangungusap sa'yo. Okay? Because much of the communication is non-verbal. Nakuha niyo po, hindi lang po yung communication na verbal, ang pwede po natin ma-pick up, okay, maintindihan. Pati rin po yung mga non-verbal things because yung body language, okay, marami pong ganyan. We won't build up the person unless 
we are sensitive to his need or to her need. Letter E. Second to the last slide. To build up others, give them grace. Kaya siguro hinuli ito sa ating study. No? Napaka-importante. To build up others, give them grace. This is what Paul say to the letter of his letter to the Ephesians. So that it will give grace to those who will hear. Dahil ginawa mo ito, okay, ginawa mo ito, it will give grace to those people who will hear. Now, ito po yun. If we are at odd with anyone, kung hindi po tayo ayos with anyone, Perhaps because he or she was wrong us dahil meron siyang ginawang kasamaan, uh, nas nasaktan niya tayo, okay? Kaya ang relasyon po natin ay natira. We are inclined to think that this person does not deserve words of encouragement. This person, because he hurt me, don't deserve words to, 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 her, to him to be built up. He deserved to be put down. Tama po, no? Dahil nasaktan tayo, may history siya sa atin na hindi maganda, hindi natin siya bibigyan ng encouraging word. Hindi natin siya ibibuild up. But again, kapatid, namnamin mo ulit ang salitang grace. Ang word grace means undeserved favor. Kaya nga grace eh. Dahil hindi niya, hindi niya, tawag nito, undeserved siya, Bibigyan mo pa rin siya. Okay? I-encourage mo pa rin siya. That is grace. Grace extend to others what God has extended to you. Huwag masyadong itasang yung sarili. Dahil kasi ikaw ay nandurun po sa position na yon with respect to God. We, you and I, don't deserve God. Don't deserve this favor from God. But God found grace on you and me. Undeserved favor. Binigyan ka ng grace. Bakit hindi mo kaya magbigay ng grace sa iba? Tama ba? You say you are a Christian. Pero hindi mo kaya magbigay ng grace. Pumula kamitin ng word Christian. Kasi laging kasama ang grace sa pagiging Kristiyano. Nakuha mo yung kapatid. It also extends to others what we need in return from others. Because we often fall or short or fail. Nagkakamali rin po tayo. Hindi mo ba gusto yon? Pag ikaw ay nagkamali, may grace rin sa'yo? It also extends to others what we need in return from others. So, although it may be true that the other person does not deserve kind words that build him up, still give the person such kind and encouraging words anyway. Kind is a karapat dapat. Bigyan, bigyan mo pa rin po siya ng kind words of encouragement. When God took on a human flesh in the person of Jesus, John 1.14 say, He saw His glory and glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Ano yung sabihin yun? Jesus is full of grace and truth. As those who have been put on the new man, which is you and me, tayo po na niligtas ni God na binago, had put a new man created in righteousness and holiness of the truth, which is Jesus, we should make sure that our words and actions are full of grace and truth. Dahil ay ikaw niligtas ni Cristo, full of grace and truth, 
we make sure, we have to make sure as a new creation of God that our words and actions is full of grace and increase. Sa atin pong pagtatapos, let me give you a story. This is a story in, in a Jewish culture. Sabi po rito, It's about a king who sent two fools for an errand. Inutusan po. So the king instructed the first fool, he called him Polish Simon, go bring me back the best thing in the world. Ikaw na hangal, hangal na Simon, humanap ka, humayo ka, give me the best thing in this world. And he talked to the other guy. The king said, you silly John. Okay? Go and find me the worst thing in this world. The first one, find me the best thing in this world. The second one, find me the worst thing in this world. And after a short time, mga kapatid, each one of them carrying a package. The first one, Simon, bowed down to the king and said, Behold, king, this is the best thing in the world. Binuksan niya po ang gift or ang present or ang package. And the package contained a tongue. Sabi ng hari, humayo ka, humarap ka ng the, the best thing in this world. Ang dala po ni Simon, dila tongue. Nung nakita po ito ng pangalawang tao o ng pangalawang fool na inutusan po ng hari, binig, 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 binuksan niya po kagad ang president and behold, my king, this is the worst thing in this world. Dila rin. The best thing in this world, dila. The best thing in this world or the worst thing in this world, dila rin. So, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Proverbs point again to the same thing. That death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sa dila mo kapatid, sa pananalita mo kapatid, may kamatayan, may buhay. Alam po sabi ni Paul in our text for today, let no corrupting talk, let no abusive language, rotten language, come out from our mouth. But only such words good for building up people, fit in the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Kapatid, as we end for today, Sa dila mo, sa pananalita mo, sa pananalita ko, sa dila ko, kapatid. May buhay, may kamatay. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, use our words to build up. Wholesome words to build up, to guide them. So people who will hear, will understand it's grace. Ayaw mo ba yun? Pag ikaw ay nagkamali, nagkulang, it will be the same grace na pupunta rin sa iyo. Kasi ang naturalesa po natin is not this. The old man continue to resurrect instead na encouraging word. Gusto mong gumante. Gusto mong i-tear down ang taong iyon. But this is not what God wants. If you say you are transformed, and God has transformed your heart and from your heart will overflow what inside your heart through your mouth, through your speeches. And I encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, use encouraging words to build up the people of God. Dear Father, napakabigat po ng iyong mensahe po ngayon. This is easy to say, but hard to do, my dear Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus 
in the name of Jesus, by the power of your parakletos. Change our heart, dear, bro, dear God. Because whatever in our hearts, whatever it overflows, Panginoon, if this heart is changed, the words that will come out from our mouth will always be edifying. It will always be glorifying your name. Alam po namin, we acknowledge that our heart need, need to be changed. But changing our heart on our own will be impossible. That's why we are begging, requesting, be merciful to us. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoon. We do believe that you have saved us not to be like this all alone. You saved us, Panginoon, so we could be changed and give glory to you. Kung kami po, Panginoon, ay patuloy na magsasalita ng ganito, it will not give glory to you. It will not give glory to you, O God, if our language are foul, if our language are abusive, how it will be, how it will give glory to you.